Hi everyone! Today we'll be talking about one of my favorite bands, as you may be able to tell by the shirt. We're talking Yeah Yeah Yeahs. Now I've had the pleasure of listening to their discography all week to come up with the cream of the crop. I'm calling this, undeniably, the top 10 best Yeah 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 songs. And for just a little bit of fun, I'll have my pick for an overrated song at the end. But in the meantime, let's get to the top 10. At number 10, we have Zero from It Splits. Yeah Yeah Yeahs were very deliberate when it came to releasing albums. They didn't coalesce until the moment was right for the trio. There was a three year gap between Fever to Tell and Show Your Bones, and yet another three year gap between that album and the third album, It Splits. Needless to say, after six years, the sound was very different. The trio went into sessions with Nick Linnae and David Sitek producing alongside the group. Linnae raved that unlike other albums at the time, It Splits was primarily created in the studio. Any songs that were brought in were changed drastically. He described drummer Brian Chase would record drum beats, and then loops of those beats would be made, to which guitarist keyboardist Nick Zinner would jam to and create a rhythm. From there, Karen O would come in to work on a vocal melody, and then the songs would just fall together. It makes sense when you hear Zero. It starts with the pulsating synth and the tease of electronic drums, until that full driving beat kicks in. By the second verse, it keeps building, until the beats are harder and the synths are bigger. Karen O sings out to all the losers and underdogs to give it all you've got. You're a zero, what's your name? No one's gonna ask you, but screw it. We're alive today, let's dance until tomorrow. It starts with such a dark intro, but explodes into ecstasy as we climb, climb, climb higher. At number nine, we have Black Tongue from Fever to Tell. Yay yeah, Yeahs are synonymous with New York City, and their origins trace back to the year 2000, where Nick Zinner and Karen O formed an acoustic duo called Unitard. That didn't last too long, and they decided to go grimy, full avant punk. They needed a drummer, so they recruited Brian Chase, who Karen had met years before in college. It all seemed too easy, really. The group wrote a bunch of songs, and before you know it, they were opening for the White Stripes and the Strokes. Two bands you might be pretty familiar with now, but back in the early 2000s were up-and-comers. The trio stood out with their trashy art punk and Karen O's theatrics, all of which are on loud and proud display on Black Tongue. The drumbeat starts as simple, restrained thrash before building into a louder and louder clap. Zinner's barrage of guitars surround the song, impenetrable, occasionally squealing along with Karen O. It's a magnificent stage for her performance. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. She's spitting venom and having a hell of a time. Boy, you just a stupid bitch, and girl, you just a no good dick. It's an incredibly satisfying and catchy refrain to close. By the end, you'll be sneering along. It's filthy, go-go punk. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. At number eight, we have Turn Into from Show Your Bones. Yeah, yeah, yes could have done the easy thing when it came to their second album. They had plenty of leftover songs that didn't make the cut on Fever to Tell. If you saw the Spike Jones-directed Rockers to Swallow live show, you saw that they easily had a full album's worth of worthy, visceral material that stood alongside the great material from their debut album. Some of that would later on resurface on their EPs. However, the group didn't want to make it feel like they were making a sequel or a B-sides addendum. They felt it necessary to reinvent themselves. On Show Your Bones, they turned down the aggression to make a more intimate, melodic album. Instead of squalls of distorted guitars, there's sprightly acoustic ones, strumming along rolling rhythms. Turn Into is the closer on the album. It starts with a jangly, simple progression. The drums are almost conga-like, no cymbals. 
and the song builds until Karen O sounds more and more assured. I know what I know. In the beginning, she is unsure about her knowledge, but she gains more confidence along her journey. The guitar strumming picks up the pace along with the drums. The short, humble bridge provides pathos, and the synth solo appears crying out for freedom. This leads to a final triumphant, I know what I know. What starts with her being dismissive of herself ends with an epic anthem of acceptance. At number seven, we have Down Boy from The Isis EP. Following Show Your Bones, Yeah 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 still had leftover songs that were written in 2004 between their two albums. While several of these tracks were part of the performance at the Fillmore West on Rockers to Swallow, these songs were simply too good to not be released properly. They enlisted the help of producer Nick Linnae, who had previously worked with Gang of Four, Nick Cave, and Talking Heads to record a quick and dirty five-song EP. Appropriately, it's a middle ground between the two albums. It has the raw vitality of Fever to Tell and the emotional vulnerability of Show Your Bones. The entire EP is essential to fans, and Down Boy is the best song on it. It starts with a low synth hum, a muted drum beat, and a hushed vocal melody. Once Karen O lets out a blood-curdling howl, the chorus lets loose with a blast of angular guitar and propulsive drumming. The lyrics are seductive and sexual. Down, count me down. Down, down, boy. She's coy about being a willing accomplice, but also keeps the apple of her eye at arm's length. Bouncing between the loud and soft dynamics enhances the drama of the song. If you never got around to checking out the Isis EP, Down Boy is the prime reason you should. At number six, we have Cheated Hearts from Show Your Bones. When the band decided to ditch all of the material it had originally written for their second album, one scrappy little song, Cheated Hearts, managed to find its way back later on in the sessions. An earlier live version could be found on Rockers to Swallow. Zinner triggers a delayed guitar loop, and Chase plays the sides of his drums, all while Karen O reels in the microphone like a fishing line, teasing the start of the song. The crowd waits in anticipation as she slowly brings the microphone to her mouth and finally starts cheated by the opposite of love. And Zinner cuts the loop for a steady guitar jangle. On the album, it's a little bit more subdued. A keyboard riff replaces the distorted loop, but the emotional wallop is still there. While it seems tamer than Fever to Tell, in the context of the album, it's one of the more rocking numbers. It adds burst of noise judiciously, before rolling it back for genuine moments of tenderness. The contrast gives the loud moments some emotional heft, as she gains clarity and shouts, Sometimes I think that I'm bigger than the sound. Some fans were disappointed by what they heard as a more timid sound on Show Your Bones but Cheated Hearts proved that they were as fierce as ever. At number five, we have Sacrilege from Mosquito. Now following Fever to Tell, it seemed like every album the band was recalling how they almost broke up. It was like a semi-annual tradition. So much so that in 2013, 10 years after Fever to Tell, most had already assumed the band had broken up. It had been four years since its blitz, and there hadn't been much noise since. So it was a bit of a surprise when their fourth album, Mosquito, was announced. Produced by TV on the radio's David Sitek and Nick Linnae alongside the band, Karen O called it a more extremely lo-fi album. It was definitely a conscious effort to make a more classic punk rock sound after the dance synth of their previous album. Unfortunately, most of the album is not very inspired. The title track evokes some of their better, earlier material. While adding rap verses from Dr. Octagon wasn't exactly revolutionary in 2013, nor was it a really good fit. 
However, Sacrilege is so awesome that it single-handedly justifies the entire album. It builds from this driving drum beat and Kara knows back and forth smooth and harsh vocals before adding twinkling pianos and spacey guitar pull-offs. The dynamics never stop building. Shimmering guitars fade in and out and Karen gets more animated as it goes. It's sacrilege, sacrilege, sacrilege you say. The epic gospel background is introduced and it's as if a sinner is pleading to a choir of angels. Check out the clip of them playing it live on Letterman with a full choir. It's rapturous. Mosquito was probably their weakest album, but Sacrilege showed that they still had untapped ideas and plenty of power. At number four, we have Heads Will Roll from It Splits. Depending on your age, you might not remember this, but there used to be physical album releases. You'd actually have to go to a store that sold records. Sometimes you would wait in line before midnight just to buy an album on release day if it was big enough. Nowadays, an album can drop unexpectedly on Spotify, and bam, it's all there. What a time to be alive. I bring this up because It's Blitz had to have its release date pushed up a month because it leaked on the internet. Now, the leak is the release. It's Blitz is a pretty front-loaded album. All the singles from it are from the first couple songs, but damn if they aren't pretty bitchin' songs. Heads Will Roll is Yeah Yeah Yeah's greatest dance song. It had several remixes, like the widely circulated one by A-Track, but the original is still the best. It's horror disco with attitude. Sung from the point of view of the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland, Karen O calls for the guillotines over an insistent club beat and slick vintage synth strings. Despite all the death sentences, the Queen still wants her victims to boogie. Off, off with your head. Dance, dance till you're dead. The music video, directed by Richard Ayuati, aka Moss from the IT crowd, is a fun blast too with its werewolf massacre on the dance floor. Heads Will Roll is a goth party staple and a dance floor killer. At number three, we have Maps from Fever to Tell. I'm sure putting Maps down this low will raise some objections from the Yeah Yeah Yeah's faithful. It is, after all, their biggest hit. It was so big, that it ended up a playable song on the video game Rock Band. And the lyrics are so well known that Beyonce had to credit the group with her song Hold Up. Karen O referred to this song as the group's baby and were hesitant to release it as a single. It was finally released as the third single off Fever to Tell after Date with the Night and Pin. Needless to say, it was a huge hit. Allegedly, MAP stands for My Angus, Please Stay. It was written about Karen's relationship with Angus Andrew, the front man of the mercurial New York City art punks, Liars. The relationship even continued through the music video, where Karen claims she had real tears because Angus was supposed to show up to the music video shoot, but was very late. The emotion of the song is palpable. There are many great ballads, but it's the naked honesty and vulnerability that makes Maps incredible. The minimalism of the chiming guitars and understated drums set the stage for Karen's pleas. Wait, they don't love you like I love you. It's personal yet universal, begging for a lover to stay and delivered in a way that sounds like you'd be devastated if they didn't. It really put them on the map. It's a quiet wonder on an album full of loud, brazen attitude, and it revealed a totally different side to the group. At number two, we have Gold Lion from Show Your Bones. Considering Gold Lion is a beloved song for Yeah Yeah Yeah's fans now, you may not recall how there was backlash when it first premiered. As noted by several music critics, the song bared a resemblance to one by the 80s UK band Love and Rockets called No New Tale to Tell. 
I've listened to a lot of music in my life, but I had never heard of it. Even nerds have blind spots. Imagine my surprise when it has a half million views on YouTube. Their fans are alive and well. Do the opening two chords sound like the opening chords to Gold Lion? Yes, sure, but that's where it ends, really. Gold Lion takes those dusty chords and rides them to the most propulsive acoustic guitar based song ever made. Exploding, tell me what you saw, tell me what you saw, the drums crash through the campfire, adding a soaring electric guitar. Its chorus is straight dynamite. It careens into the wordless refrain. I'll tell you what to do. Ooh, 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 oh. And into the perfectly composed but lethally heavy guitar solo. Three years removed from their debut, the band was sharp and using the studio to accent their sonic fury. It's the sound of the maddening struggle to find the light, looking for gold lions along the way to point you in the right direction. Gold Lion is fun, bombastic, and definitely one of their best. At number one, we have Date with the Night from Fever to Tell. Yes, the first taste of Yeah Yeah Yes, their first major label single, was the perfect art rock manifesto for the band. It introduced them with a cacophonous bang. What an entrance. It's a little over two minutes long. I've often put the song right back on after hearing it. It's a pure shot of adrenaline. You just want to experience that rush again. It's thrilling, sloppy, disco anarchy. The hi-hats are agitated, but fast and syncopated. Brian Chase, a former jazz student, knows how to ride pure emotion. Nick Zinner turns up, the new Jimmy Page of the Upper East Side, with his Zeppelin-sized riffs that just rip. Karen O has never been better, capturing the ferocious power of the song. I got a day with the night. It's an incredible kick in the teeth. You gotta get out there and get what's yours. Karen O was growling and coming for our throats. She was gonna make her mark, goddammit. You're either with her or against her. The song sounds dangerous, and Karen O lets out some vicious wails that channels the minimalism of this crew. It's only drums, guitar, and vocals, but it's not meant for the garage. It's meant for the stadium. If you heard it, you needed to see them live. Get down to the mosh pit. It will be worth it. It's a banger. It's their best song. And now I'll share two songs that almost made the list. The first is Man from Fever to Tell. This clearly signals that the first album is my favorite. It's a dead giveaway. To me, it hangs together so well. The energy on it is so addictive. Almost all bluster, but with nothing to lose. Man is two minutes of pure, spunky thrash funk. Its riff is sharp and gigantic, and the drums swing back and forth between a groove and a spiral. Karen O yells that we're all gonna burn in hell, cause we've got the fever to tell. You'll need to catch your breath after this jam. The other is Dull Life from It's Blitz. It's Blitz is a little underrepresented in the tent, but it has some solid jams beyond the big singles. Dull Life has some great dynamics, it lures you in with a sleep rock riff before speeding it up. Cue the galloping drums and we are off. It's a race to the end of the song. Naturally, they drop back, slowing it down before unleashing the stampede once again. It's a great song. Now we get to the point where I pick the most overrated song by an artist. I came up with this premise after all, so here I am. However, Yeah Yeah Yeahs were very selective with what they released. Before the release of Cool It Down, they had only really released four albums over the span of 20 years. It's not exactly a lot of output. In their case, they have amazing quality control. 
Every album is worth a listen. They are never going through the motions. So I feel like most of their material is properly rated. If I don't like one of their songs that much, it's not like other artists where I have a true distaste of something. So I feel like my pick is strange with Art Star being the most overrated. It's hardly the most played, but I do remember it being one of the most talked about back in the message board and standing room only days. Like, they have to play Art Star. It's their best. But is it really though? It was probably the first time they were introduced to the hysterical, howling theatrics of Karen O. I get that primal feeling. But as a song? I don't know. They've made much better stage setters for Karen O to shock to. The do 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 Children's melody is kind of weak. To want to see the song live now smacks, to me, of some weird attitude of wanting to show that you were the first to discover a band. It's indie elitism, and it's a weird way to think. They made much better songs. If that's your style, check out the record. But let's hear some songs for the rest of us. As you're still watching, I'd like to feature a deep cut as well. And for that, I'll shine a light on Countdown, which was a cast off from Fever to Tell that was stuck to the B-side of Maps. It's an interesting counter to that bombastic ballad. It's more garagey and more bluesy than anything on the album proper, but with plenty of swagger. It's got a sparse groove, and Karen scats along with the rhythm of the verse. It's classic, quiet, loud rock. And the payoff is a mighty splash cymbal heavy freakout. Karen leads our countdown confidently. Who knows what we're counting down to, but count me in. You should check it out. So there you have it. That was undeniably the top 10 best Yeah 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 songs. So, how wrong was I? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you somehow think Art Star is their best song? Let me know. And if there's any artist you'd like to see me rank, let me know in the comments below. Hope you stick around, and thank you for watching. If you saw the Spike Jones directed rocker, if you shot, uh, it starts with a simple jangly percussion. Uh, per while several, <clears throat> while several, uh, uh, in the context uh, introduced, and that's it's uh, <laughs> that Beyonce had to give the the group, <laughs> but it's the naked, <laughs> a pure shot of adrenaline. Uh, it's a pure shot of adrenaline. <laughs> It's a pure shot of adrenaline to channel the mul- uh, You'll need a- you'll need- It's an- It's an- uh.